Welcome to Keysight Education Portal. Today, we will be discussing the measurement system analysis for Keysight Pathway of Manufacturing Analytics. Measurement system analysis is a method of determining the amount of variation that exists within a measurement process. It is used to analyze the measurement system error in production. So, why do we need MSA? We can see here, in the manufacturing process, we ensure PCBA are good from the tests, before we ship the products to customers. However, the measurement system, like a 3070, a 1000 or a functional test equipment, need to be checked as well to minimize the variation that can be caused by measurement system error, to ensure the consistency of the measurement process. For this let us know, why does measurement system error occur? A measurement system error arises due to lack of accuracy and lack of precision of the measurement system. Accuracy refers to, how close is the measurement system performing to reading the correct value, and it is determined by bias and variance. Precision refers to, consistency of the recurrence of the same readings using the same method of measurement, and it is determined by repeatability and reproducibility. Repeatability refers to, variations obtained when a single item is measured repeatedly using the same measurement system. And reproducibility refer to, variations seen when multiple items are measured using the same measurement system. To determine the measurement system error, Keysight Pathway of Manufacturing Analytics uses gauge R and R, which is gauge repeatability and reproducibility. Gauge R and R estimates how much is the total process variation caused by the measurement system. The total process variation consists of part-to-part -part variation, and measurement system variation. The part-to-part -part variation measures the components and devices, and the measurement system variation measures the measuring instrument. There are two ways to perform gauge R and R study. One is nested method, and the other is crossed method. The nested method is applied if successive testing of a part alters or damages the value of the part. We can see here with the measurement from ICT-001. Component 1 has been tested three times to check if the variability of Component 1 is acceptable, which is repeatability. Also, ICT-001 has measured both Component 1 and Component 2 to check if the variability between Component 1 and Component 2 is acceptable, which is reproducibility. Notice that for nested method, a single component can only be tested in one equipment. Crossed method is applied if successive testing of a part does not alter or damage the value of the part. A single component can be tested by multiple equipment. Component 1 can be tested for both ICT-001 and ICT-004. And again, three components has been tested for three times respectively, that is repeatability. The comparison among three components is related to reproducibility. Let us now see, how to utilize the features of manufacturing system analytics in Pathwave Manufacturing Analytics application. To access the feature, go to Process Analysis. Select Company. Select Site. Select Date. Click on the calendar icon and choose the starting dates and ending dates of data to be analyzed. After choosing the dates, remember to click on Go, to ensure that the results are updated. The results of eligible project and equipment qualified for MSA are displayed in the table, which includes, the list of project names, the equipment that are used, and the number of equipment during the selected duration. Let us take Project 008 as an example. Click on the Project 008 row. It will generate a table below that shows a list of test names that are tested by InCircuit Tester 001 and InCircuit Tester 004 in Project 008. We can see the CPK value of R581 of ICT-001 is 4.81, and the CPK value of R581 on ICT-004 is 4.54, and the average CPK is 4.6. Let's choose the test R581 as an example, click on the test R581 row. It will pop up a new window that displays 5 statistical graphs. Notice that this measurement system analysis is generated automatically. Which means, we need not set up each element one by one. And, the analysis performed are for nested study by default. Next moving on to the next part, we will interpret 6 statistical graphs of measurement system analysis as shown. Firstly, by clicking on download icon as shown. Each single graph can be downloaded in the form of image, CSV or PDF version. Next, we will move on to measurement system analysis metrics. The top left is study variation, shows how much the variation caused by the measurement system is against the total variation due to the other sources. In the example as shown here, 
there are 66.88% variation caused by, in circuit tester ICT-001 and ICT-004 under the project 008. The second one is contribution, shows the of measurement contribution error, due to part-to-part -part variation over the total variation. In this case, the part-to-part -part variation has contributed 44.73% measurement error over the total variation. The third one is tolerance, shows how much is the variability in the set band from the center. Notice that the measurement system variability can be regarded as consistency, if the value of study variation falls in the set tolerance band. In this case, the tolerance is 88.75% and study variation is 66.88%, thus, the measurement system variability is acceptable. The last one is number of distinct categories. This represents how many separate groups of parts the system can distinguish. In this case, the value is 1, which means the system cannot distinguish between two different parts to distinguish, which has a higher value compared to the other. On the top right corner, part tolerance is 8% by default. This indicates that the variability between part to part do not expect to exceed 8%. The tolerance criteria refer to AIAG guideline that recommended the part tolerance shell under 10%. Next, we will interpret each statistical data visualization in detail. Firstly, we can see the component of variation chart. It is breakdown of variation into repeatability, reproducibility and part-to-part -part variation. In this visualization, the first representation is on the overall gauge R and R. It provides the study variation contribution and the tolerance of the overall gauge R and R study. The other sets of bar charts provide the same information on the study variation, contribution and tolerance for, repeatability, reproducibility and part-to-part -part variation respectively. A good measurement system should not exceed more than 10% of total variance. Let's now move on to the R chart. The R chart displays the consistency of the measurement system measuring the part. It shows the repeatability and reproducibility variation. R chart is also a control chart which is used to check if the measurement system variation is in control. The R chart determines the measurement system error caused by lack of precision in the measurement system. Mouse over each point, we can see there are several statistical items are displayed as shown. The value of each point represents the range. R1 is 272 mils, which is the difference between the largest and smallest measured value. We can see the serial number of the dot that was used to measure in the name of the test equipment. The upper control limit and lower control limit are limits in quality control for data points to be within it, to ensure acceptance for the part or product. They are calculated through sampling a subset of readings. Upper control limit is derived by adding three times the standard deviation to the average of the measured readings. Lower control limit is derived by subtracting three times the standard deviation from the average of the measured readings. Lastly, the center line is the mean range that is the average of six range points. In this case, we can see the measurement system variation is in control, since all points are within the limits, the same part is measured, and three different measurements are taken using the same measurement system. We see that the consistency of ICT-004 is better than ICT-001, as the variance among R4, R5 and R6 are closer to the average, which is 500 mils. Next, let's move on to X bar chart. The X bar chart displays part to part variation against the repeatability of the equipment. Notice that all points should be outside the control limits. Therefore, the part variation can be detected in the measurement system. If the points are inside and control limits, it is difficult to differentiate whether the error is caused by part itself or measurement system. The X bar chart determines the measurement system error caused by lack of accuracy in the measurement system. Mouse over each point in X bar chart. We can see there are several statistical items are displayed as shown. The value of each point represents the mean of range, the mean of R6 is 1.0036000, and we can see the serial number of the DUT, the name of the test equipment. Upper control limit is derived by adding three times the standard deviation to the average of the mean. Lower control limit is derived by subtracting three times the standard deviation from the average of the mean. Lastly, the center line is the mean range that is the average of the mean points. In this case, we can see all points are outside the control limits. The part-to-part -part variation are minimal for ICT-004 that compared ICT-001. Next, we will move on to box plots measurement. 
we can see the box plots of ICT-004 is better since the range of ICT-004 is relatively smaller, which means the variance of ICT-004 is smaller than ICT-001. Therefore, with our chart, X-bar chart and box plots measurement, we can see the consistency of ICT-004 is better than ICT-001. Lastly, we will move on to measurement by part number. We can see here, measurement by part number displays the maximum value, the minimum value and the average of range of each point. Mouse over each point. There are several statistical items displayed. The measured value represents the mean of range, the mean of R1 is 1.0014000, and we can see the serial number, the testing equipment, the maximum value and minimum value of R1.